This is a much different country and a much different Democratic Party from the one that nominated Bill Clinton to the one that's about to nominate Hillary Clinton. Now, I can put up a couple of stacks. The party is more liberal. One in five Democrats describe, uh, one in five Americans describe themselves as liberal. Now it's one in four. Uh, Seventy-two percent of the electorate uh, night in 2012 was white voters. Nearly 90 percent of the electorate was white voters. Seven years later. Uh, something like same-sex marriage had the support of 48 percent of Americans in 1992. Now it's 68 percent. It's a changing country. And this, is, and this, and this whole reflects that change. This party's different. Different than Cleveland. Well, and this party's different from the party that you came uh, into elected office in, both running in 96 and winning in 01. It, it is, but we've seen a state like Virginia mm -hmm. that for since 1964 had been solidly Republican, that back in 2001 had five statewide elected Republicans, zero Democrats, and now we've got five elected Democrats, and Barack Obama carried the state twice, and now with Tim Kaine and Hillary Clinton, we're going to carry it again. It's a blue state. It's not a blue state, as I found out back in 2014. It's, in a very it's never easy to win. It's never easy to win, but you've got to put coalitions together, and I think that's what the Democratic Party has been its best when it leans forward, leans into the future. Last week in Clinton, we heard this great look back to the mystical good old days, a, a frankly, a, can, a convention that I've never seen like that. It, it, it brought that much fear. When I think you're, you're hearing here, much more optimistic, uplifting. You know, though, it is interesting. You, when you were governor, Tim Kaine, when he followed you as governor, um, you guys were considered pro-business Democrats. Can you be a pro-business Democrat and uh, no longer be pro-free trade? I think you can be a pro-growth Democrat. And I think there are challenges. I still support. You're a TPP guy. I support TPP, but I think you've got to acknowledge uh, that back from the 90s and in, into the 2016, we have not done enough for communities that have been hurt by trade. If we have we our, made bad deals? Well, or have think, we done a I poor think, job? What's, what have we done a poor job? I think the deal itself. No, I think what happens is disproportionately the benefits of trade go to metropolitan areas. You can show all the stats you want, but when you lose that textile factory or that furniture factory, oftentimes that may have stopped in Mexico on the way to China, there's concerns about that. And I think advocates of trade need to say that if we believe the TPP is going to add 800 billion to a trillion to the economy, we need to do more than a measly four and a half billion dollars for people who are left behind. We need to actually identify the winners in trade and say, you need to locate your businesses and your supply chain mm -hmm. in some of these communities that have been left behind. I know you're ecstatic that Tim Kaine's on the yes. ticket. You like having a Virginia. You guys are to tight. But make the make the why case really quick. Why is Tim Kaine the best pick for her? Tim Kaine is the most trusted, the most steadfast, the best values of anybody I know in politics. And Chuck, the best evidence of that is when the press went to the Republicans to see if they'd say a bad word about him, they couldn't find anybody in the Senate or even at the state level to say, even if they disagree with the policies, they say he's a good man. As Jeff Flake did in that tweet there. So hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.